Hi, today I'd like to show you how to configure the Ethernet RFC 2544 test on the MT1000A Network Master Pro. RFC 2544 was developed in 1999 by the IETF Internet Engineering Task Force and is a benchmarking methodology for networking devices, interfaces and hardware. The main metrics of this test are throughput, frame loss, latency and burst or burstability. So let's get down to setting up the RFC 2544 test on the MT1000A. After starting the instrument, we get to the main menu with all available applications. This menu may vary depending on the options installed. In the Ethernet line, click on the RFC 2544 app and select the ports that we are going to test. Please note that the both port must be selected for switches or routers testing. After loading the application, we get into the setup window, in which we need to configure the physical interfaces. First, in the port tab of the first port, select the interface tab from the drop-down list. Confirm the changes made. The interface is configured and launched. Here we can see at what wavelength the selected transceiver works and what standard it meets. Then, in the streams tab, we should configure the corresponding MACs and IPs. You can use the default MAC and ARP request as well as DNS and DHCP if required. Set the required IP and select the payload from the drop-down list. For more detailed setting of the stream, you can go to the detailed setting menu. All possible stream settings are available in this menu. On each of the tabs, the corresponding settings are highlighted. You can also select additional technologies, such as VLAN. Then the corresponding tab will appear to be able to configure the VLAN settings. Next, we configure Sync E, ETP, or OAM if required. Return to the port tab. Let's pass to the second port and make the appropriate settings. Select the interface in the port tab. In the stream tab, check the MAC and IP settings. In our case, they should be reversed with respect to the first port. You may have noticed that the information has already been entered. The thing is that the follow flag is set here, which allows you to follow the settings of the first port. Next, we configure Sync E, ETP, or OAM if required. Go back to Port tab of the first port and click on the link status box. Clear the history and check that all the required connection parameters are in order. Thus, we have configured the physical interfaces of the instrument. Go to the test window, where you need to configure the RFC 2544 testing parameters. In the control tab, select the testing mode. Four different test modes can be selected. Switch rotor test, which tests the performance of hubs, switches or rotors. Rotor latency test, which tests the response time of a rotor using ping frames. End-to-end -end network test, in which the data transmission network is tested directly using a local and remote device. Single-ended network test, in which the network with reflector at the far end is tested. Below we select the metrics that need to be tested. We select throughput, frame loss, latency and burst. Corresponding tabs appears depending on the selected metrics. Go to the throughput tab. Throughput is the highest data rate or load at which a device under test can forward frames without dropping it, depending on the frame size. First, we choose the frame size. It can be constant, changing with a given step, given in an arbitrary sequence, or defined by a user. Select all frame sizes and a jumbo frame, which can be set up to 16 kilobytes. Set the duration of the test with one frame size to 3 seconds. We adjust the line load in percent or bytes per second. You can manually set the minimum, maximum value and step, or you can use the auto search which allows you to automatically find the maximum line load with a certain resolution. Set the line load from 20 to 100% in 20% steps. Select the level at which the bandwidth calculation will be carried out, for example network layer. Set the bandwidth threshold if necessary. Go to the frame loss tab. Frame loss is a measure of the frame loss rate across a range of data rates and frame sizes. Here we define the same parameters, frame size, test duration, line load. Set the parameters to stop the test when the maximum load is reached without losing frames if required. 
Go to the Latency Jitter tab. Latency is the time that is counting from the moment when the frame left the instrument until the moment when the frame returned for different data rates for a specific frame size. Also, set the necessary parameters. Set thresholds if necessary. It is possible to run the test only with those parameters at which it was performed in the previous steps, for example when testing frame loss. We set the load threshold for example 80. If the frame loss test fails at over 80% load, the latency G2 test will not run. This can shorten the testing time. Go to Burst tab. Burst is the number of frames combined into a sequence. The burst value is determined by the maximum frame sequence size that is the device under test can handle without losing frames for a given frame size. Define the required parameters, frame size and test duration. Determine the number of frames per burst. You can manually set the minimum, maximum value and burst step. Or you can use Auto Search, which allows you to automatically find the maximum burst with a certain resolution. Let's set the constant size of the burst to 3 million. Select the parameters to stop the test when the maximum burst duration is reached without losing frames if required. Go to the Advanced tab, in which we set additional testing parameters, if necessary, like throughput type or testing way in end-to-end -end test mode. Click Start and the result window appears. During testing, we can switch to other available tabs and monitor the progress. The total test time depends on the selected RFC 2544 test settings and can be very long. To speed up, let's skip the waiting time. After the test is completed, the summary tab will display information about the past tests in the pass-fail format, highlighted in green, yellow or red, so you can immediately understand which of the tests had errors. Each of the tabs display the corresponding test result in a table format, as well as in a graph format. For example, on the throughput tab, we can look at difference in channel efficiency at different layers of the OSI model depending on the frame size. When calculating the utilization level, all traffic passing through the channel is taken into account. While when calculating the network level, only the payload of this level is taken into account. It can be seen that the transmitted data using small frames is ineffective, since a lot of the transmitted data is occupied by service information, not by law. You can look at the frame loss, latency jitter and burst tab in detail as well. The event log tab displays the log of events that occurred during testing. If any errors occurs, detailed information about it will be displayed here. All detailed statistics are displayed on the statistics tab. On the left, a timeline is displayed with the labels that you can go back to and check the status, for example before the error occurred, and the overall status for the entire time of the test. In the drop-down menu, you can select various parameters and view their statistics. To save the report, click on the document icon on the right menu. In the window, enter the necessary data, the file format, PDF, XML or CSV, the name of the client, project, operator, load the logo and click Generate. In the next window, select the save directory, enter the file name, click OK and save report. After saving, the report is available for viewing directly on the instrument. Click View PDF. The report will contain all the necessary information about the test, including complete statistics and log. Close the report and return to the application. Now we finished the Ethernet RFC 2544 testing on the Network Master Pro MT1000A. At the end, it should be noted how you can simplify and speed up the test of the instrument for testing. We can save the settings to the Favorites tab, so that then, when you restart the instrument, you can load all the settings with one click of a button. To do so, open the right menu and press Load Save. In the window, select the directory and file name, let's say RFC 2544 test. Select Add to Favorites and click Save Settings. After that, you can go to the Favorites tab and make sure that the Quick Launch icon for the test appears. Thus, when starting the instrument, we can immediately go to the Favorites, load the settings with the one button and go directly to testing. That is all for today, and if you have any questions, please contact Anritsu. Thanks for watching.